The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. This is revealed. Good evening, good morning, good night. <laughs> no matter where you are, may the Lord Jesus bless you. I am, I am excited to be here. And um, this is going to be a little different because I'm not technically teaching, but kind of teaching. But uh, I wanted to do some question and answers specifically regarding the prophetic. Yes. Not, not dream interpretation. Not do, how do I heal the sick, none of that. We are simply focusing on the prophetic. The reason why I am doing this is um, I've, uh, I'm receiving a lot of questions regarding the prophetic. And um, it's important for people to be informed, to understand the difference between who is a prophet, who is a prophetic person, who is a prof what is a prophetic voice, um, to know the distinction. Yesterday I said this um, on my Instagram. I was with Uncle Charles and Eva in the in the late late night, and uh, uh, <laughs> Apostle Daniel, the Apostle to the Universe. God bless you, my faithful brother. You are such a good man. Um, um, I aspire to be like you. Um, I was uh, I was explaining something that was very needed because somebody asked me. Uh, Papa Lo, how, how do you hear God? So for me to explain how I hear God, I had to explain why I hear God the way I hear Him. If I just tell you how I hear God, I have not answered you. I need to explain to you why I hear Him like that. Because the reality is, if you are not called to do what I'm doing, you won't hear Him in the same way. I'm not saying you won't hear Him. Please listen to me. I'm not saying you won't hear him. You just won't hear him in the same way. Why? Because my calling, the way he designed me, the way he called me, I am wired to, to experience him in a certain way because that is the way he has sent me to minister to his people. So an example is this. An evangelist can be led by the Holy Spirit. An evangelist can hear the Holy Spirit may even have an encounter with angels, but it will never be the same like a prophet. Why? An evangelist, God will not pro prioritize, the Lord will not uh, prioritize an evangelist to have angelic encounters and to, and to see visions and to prophesy because that is not what an evangelist is called to do. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's, that's not... That's not what an evangelist is called to do. An evangelist is called to win souls. So every time God will minister to the person, majority of the time will be regarding the salvation of souls. Right. Why? Because that's their calling. Yes. God will be breaking his own protocol if he's making them become this amazing um, uh, prophet, yet you're an evangelist. It doesn't work like that. Um, it doesn't work like that. And another thing is this, is that you don't become a prophet. I'm sorry to break it to you guys. You don't become a prophet. You don't become one. You don't become one. Why? Because prophets are preordained. Yeah. When the Lord came to Jeremiah, he told him, before you were born, I knew you. I need you in your mother's womb. So um, Jeremiah wasn't asking to be a prophet. He was a prophet from birth. Notice every prophet in scripture was never confused if they were a prophet or not. Yes. Yeah, that's true. So if you're asking, am I a prophet, you're not. Mm. 
I know some people won't like that, but I have to tell you the truth. <laughs> I see people making videos of, you know, how to know you are a prophet. Mm. Notice the people who say this are usually not prophets. <laughs> it's better to say how to know you are prophetic. Yes. Because you see, when the Holy Spirit gave us gifts, he gave some word of knowledge, some word of prophecy. So you can know if you're prophetic but you don't discover that, oh, I, I, you know, I was told I was a prophet. That was a false prophecy. I'm sorry. Maybe God said that you will be a great man or woman of God that will do great things. Because you don't need to be a prophet to do great things. Amen. If you ever meet anyone that says, you know, I always knew I was a prophet. Notice their validation of being a prophet came from them. The Lord never made himself known. <laughs> if they be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known. I will introduce myself because your assignment is connected to representing me by my speech. So you can't talk about me if you have never met me. Wow. See, a pastor never, have, he never has to have an encounter with God. Why? Because God can minister to him by his spirit. It's not bad. I know, me, I know pastors that have had powerful encounters with God. But I'm saying that is not a, a requirement to be a pastor. That's not a requirement to be an apostle. That is not a requirement to be an evangelist. That is not a requirement to be a teacher. The only one that has that criteria, it's in the scriptures, is being a prophet. So when you don't understand these little details, then you will hear people say, you know, the Bible says there shall rise many false prophets, duh, even in the church. <laughs> and the false doesn't only mean that they will be deceiving in a way. Of course, a false prophet is a deceiver. But I'm saying also, if you call yourself a prophet, but you teach the wrong teachings, saying this is how prophecy should be, yet you have never prophesied. Now, you are false. Yes. Because you are dealing in a, you are truly called by God, but you are working where you shouldn't be. So you are false. All right, think about it like this. Let's, let's, let's make it simple. You go, you go into um, the bank and you go into the vault Ah, they will call the cops and they will arrest you and you, you may get shot. It doesn't matter that your money is in there. You don't have jurisdiction to go in there. The moment you cross that lane, you are now a thief. Mm. Right? Yeah. But the guy sitting uh, in the counter can go back there and there's no issue. Yet it's your money back there. Why? Mm. Simply because where you have been called to be, it does not become a hostile environment for you because it's where you're supposed to be. But the moment you stand where you're not supposed to be, that's where you have a lot of issues. I was just talking to um, my, my brother and my friend. Um, uh, I, I don't want to mention his name. I don't want to get unnecessary battles for him. But we were talking about, and he was asking me very profound questions about Samuel when he was summoned uh, by the witch. Was it really Samuel? Was it a demon? And I, and, I, and I told him, man of God, it, it was 100% Samuel. And we discussed it at the end. He was like, wow, I get it now. But notice, we can speak about certain things because it is our calling. Mm. I know it. I understand it because it is in my calling. I have to know these things. So somebody cannot just pick up the Bible. and You know, it's so laughable to me. If you ever see a prophet rising up and saying, you know, you don't need a prophecy. You just need to look in the Bible and you find your word. There is truth to that. I'm not saying they're entirely wrong. But that makes their calling irrelevant. Why are you a prophet? There's a verse we were reading in, um, I was reading earlier. Uh, let me find it. I'm going to show you why people misinterpret scripture. 
um, and then we'll go into this. Amen. So this is in Matthew 22, verse 29. This is what the Lord Jesus is saying. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do error, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. They were asking him about the resurrection of the dead and whose wife is this going to be, blah, 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 all that. But when Jesus answered them, he said, your mistake is twofold. Number one, you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. If you ever meet somebody that talks scripture without power, know that their scripture knowledge is not complete. Because according to the Lord Jesus, for you to be proven that you know scripture, You must know the scriptures and the power of God. So if the power of God is lacking, you don't know the scriptures. Because to know the scriptures is to operate in the power of God. So if the power of God is not present, you don't know scripture. That's why Paul said it like this. That your faith should be what? On the power of God. Because if you believe in God's ability and hear power, you see... Um, little children who don't understand power, they think power is when you shake and you fall. (laughs) To know the power of God is to understand the extent of God's ability, which is beyond our comprehension. If somebody says God cannot, just know they don't know him. They don't know his power. Who are you to say God can do that? A God who says, your ways are not my ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. So if that is the concept, if even Paul says, you know, I came to you in fear and trembling. I, I count to know nothing except Jesus crucified. Notice, he, he, he summarized all his scriptures to the crucifixion, to the crucifixion, sorry. The crucifixion of the Lord and his resurrection, that your faith should be in his power. The reason why he mentioned his crucifixion is because it is impossible for a man to die and to come back. So he speaks about his death so that when they see the power, they will know that he is risen. They will know the extent of his ability. Do you realize if Jesus never rose rose from the dead, then Christianity has no point. You might as well go be a Buddhist. Because that is the core belief of being a believer. Is the power of God that God authored life and dead. Buddha didn't come back. Muhammad didn't come back. You name any of them, they died and we forgot them. Their bones are still here with us. But Jesus. But Jesus. So, without understanding this... um, these simple things, you, you find people saying, oh, so-and-so is a warlock. Well, what, if you ask them, what is a warlock? They don't know. Yeah. It just sounds good to say because yeah. my titles keep changing. Mm-hmm. One day I'm a wizard. One day I'm a warlock. The next time I'm a magician. <laughs> next time I am operating with... The, which ones is it? Yeah. <laughs> do, do you understand what I'm saying? But all this, it just shows the knowledge of what they speak of, they don't even know. They'll say, I'm a sorcerer. I'm a warlock. Which one is it? <laughs> I'm a wizard. Which one is it? <laughs> do, do you understand what I'm saying? But all this is because when somebody does not understand certain operations of things that God can do, they rather credit it to the devil. True. Yet a believer should know the extent of God's power. Yes. A woman who had a baby breached. I turned the baby in church. They said it was witchcraft. (laughs) The baby is born. The baby is healthy. How is that witchcraft? But you see, the reason is, is because they just know how to declare some prophetic words to you and then they will call themselves prophets. Mm -hmm. They know how to to lay hands on you, maybe cast out some demons and they think that's what the prophetic is. No. Listen, anyone that casts out devils, you are not special. It's called being a Christian. Now, there's, a, there's an extent 
when your manifestation of God exceeds what what is normal, Mm -hmm. then you understand that this person is operating from an office, not from legal rights. You see, that's what the Lord Jesus did. The Lord Jesus, when he cast out demons, ah, he caused an uproar. They said he's casting out devils using uh, the prince of demons. (laughs) And uh, the Lord Jesus said, if I cast them out by Beelzebub, then whom do your son cast out demons by? Because exorcism existed. So you as because he's small, it's of God. Me, because I can do it big, is of the devil. So you see where the minds of people are. So I want to help you understand. That's why I said prophetic Q&A. I want you to ask questions regarding the prophetic, how to understand it, um, how, how it works. Uh, you're right, my, my brother. Listen, even, even Apostle Daniel, um, man, he's, he's prophesying like crazy. But you'll be the first one to tell you that I am growing in this. I'm maturing in this. There are things I'm maturing into also because they are not what I was given. Prophecy, huh? from birth. From six, I'm, uh, seeing has never been a problem. I've been seeing since I was six. Hearing from God since I was six. So this is something I'm 36 right now. That's 30 years ago. So it's something I'm very seasoned in, not because I was taught, but God himself came to me. Yeah. So I, am, I have more understanding in this area. I'm not saying I'm the most, I'm, I know more than everyone. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But I do know. There's always, I have, I know senior prophets who are much older than me. They are much more seasoned than me because they've been around longer than I have. And they are born prophets. I've learned from them. That's how it goes. Okay, let's, let's get some good questions. Can, can you vet some questions for me, Musa? Yes, please. We can get some in here too, and then we'll do YouTube, but mostly YouTube. I want to bless the people on YouTube. Uh, keep liking the videos and, and the video share. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Let's keep um, the ball rolling. So I want somebody. So we can have two people. Who else will have a mic so we can? Oh, you have one? Okay, okay. So you choose questions too. Good ones. All right, go, go, go for it. EA on YouTube is asking, how do you differentiate open visions from your imagination? Oh, imagination is in the mind. Open vision is right before you. So open vision, you see, they are closed vision. What Visions of the mind are called closed visions, meaning they are not in the open. An example is this. When Paul had an encounter, when he was still Saul going to Damascus, He had an encounter with the Lord Jesus. It was an open vision. Even though the guys who were with him did not perceive the voice, they felt the atmosphere. They saw something. They could not decipher what it was, but it was an experience that they took part of that they themselves got afraid that they ran away. You you get what I'm saying? But yet Paul was the one who was watching. Remember, it even affected his physical eyes. He became blinded because of it. So open visions are like open. If I'm having an open vision now, you will feel it too. Yes, 100%. -hmm. The openness doesn't mean it's not only in the perception of how you see it, but it has a physical and direct impact on your environment. Where you are, it will feel it. Yes. Yes. It will be affected, yeah. Did that did that answer it? So closed visions are inside, open visions are like they actually affect your atmosphere. And remember, we have closed visions include trances. You know, trances, daydreaming, visions of the mind, those are all closed. I believe uh, visions of the night also fall into closed visions because the, uh, a vision of the night is still happening within you. Yeah. It's not affecting your atmosphere. 
See, when Jesus, our Lord, had an open vision where Moses and Elijah came to him, his disciples saw them too. Right? Yes. Uh-huh, keep going. Next question. Uh-huh. How do I much um, p- prosperous in purpose is asking, how do I mature more prophetically now as I've been seeing and hearing since a young child but have no guidance? Sorry? How do I mature prophetically because I've been hearing and seeing since I was a child? But I have no guidance. No one guided me. You see, don't confuse perceiving God and hearing the audible voice of God. You see, when you know the difference between these things, it becomes easy to mature. Always remember the gift of God is perfect. Gifts don't grow. We grow into them. Because God has never given anything incomplete. So what you need is to learn how to perceive God, meaning that you need mentorship. You see, if you are born a prophet, you won't need to be taught the basic stuff because God himself will teach you. An example is when, before I started preaching, I didn't come from a religious house. I didn't. I was taught by angels, literally. Eva, you know this. Where's Eva? Where's Eva? Where's, where did Eva go? Huh? Yeah, Eva knows this. I would have visitations every night for 30 nights. Every night. I was, I was not, for a while, I was not myself because it was just too much. It was the most overwhelming thing I had ever experienced. The basis of my ministry, I was not taught by man. God brought my father later. Okay, let's keep going. Another question on YouTube, and it is, what is the danger of going out and praying for people and prophesying to people before you've been authorized to do so? Thank you, Pop. Uh, mainly because you may encounter battles that you're not ready to fight or you're not in part to fight. So it becomes dangerous because just because you're gifted in something, you see, every soldier has a gun. Doesn't mean you're ready for war. That's why it's always good to be under authority. So it's a very, very important action. Okay, go, go ahead. Let's, um, let's someone that. asked how to know if elect or saint and what office you're called to. Sorry? How to know if elect or saint and what office you're called how to. How to know elect, the difference if between you're elect, the, yeah. if you're elected or if yeah. you're a saint. Mm-hmm. And then what office you're called to. The, the elect and saint doesn't matter. If you're in Jesus, that's what matters. That's an unnecessary detail. It doesn't change your relationship with God. What matters is what office you're called to will naturally manifest. You have to remember, there are a lot of pastors, but very few pastors are recognized by heaven. There's a lot of evangelists, but very few evangelists recognized by heaven. There's a lot of teachers, but very few teachers are recognized by heaven, just like the apostles only recognized in heaven. They are prophets only recognized in heaven. So if it is from God, God will position you where you will grow into that place, where you will grow and you'll be effective. You see, there are people who are not born with an office because not everyone has an office. Not everyone has an office. We are all called to serve God, but not everyone has an office because not everyone is a leader. You understand? Not everyone is a leader. So what does that mean? If, okay, Elisha was a prophet, but he was a farmer. He needed somebody to release him into ministry, Mm. which was Elijah. But when Elijah came, even though Elisha was a prophet, Elisha had no office. He did not have any work to do. That's why he was a farmer. When Elijah came, the assignment was Elisha is supposed to continue what you started. So for every man or woman called to a specific office, there are certain men and women that God will rise that will continue what you started. So those ones will operate in the same element. They will not be exactly the same, but they will operate in the same 
element, an example is Elisha did crazy miracles. Raised the dead, but him himself, he died. Elijah never died. Elijah was taken up. There are things Elijah knew by virtue of his position that Elisha never knew, even though he was imparted, even though he had the anointing, even though he had the power, even though he had the spirit of Elijah. His purpose was to finish what Elijah started. So if you want to mature spiritually and become um, confirmed by heaven, always have somebody that has truly been sent by God that you can be an extension of what God is doing with them. You can be an extension of the vision. Then that makes you a candidate of that grace if you're not born with it. Because if you cannot identify your office, it means you don't have one. I'm sorry, these things are difficult to say, but it's, it's honest truth. See, you can doubt God. Have you really called me? But you will never doubt that you have a position in God. You get what I'm saying? Those are different. Like I see people being anointed into the office of a prophet or being lifted to the prophet of an apostle. I'm like, hey. <laughs> you know, I do, I do mixed martial arts, right? I do Muay Thai. I've done Jiu Jitsu. Uh, we, we, there was a joke that used to go around because, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the UFC. And um, all Brazilians that were in the UFC at a certain season, uh, a few years ago, this is like 10, 15 years ago, they all had black belt in jiu-jitsu. So it was just like, you guys are donating this belt because there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> and it proved when they went with wrestlers and other people, then he was like, ah, then that one is a legit black belt. That's when they started that term of, uh, that one is like a real black belt. You, you get what I'm saying? So we can't give out offices like they are donation. <laughs> do, do you get what I'm saying? Amen. You just can't. It's not for us to give. We can't give it. Let me add on that. Moses is crying to God. He's saying, Lord, I'm tired of this burden. Just take me. Kill me and take me home. God, it, God says, Moses, Relax. Gather 70 elders. I will take of your spirit and I will put it in them. And they will help you with the burden. Notice, impartation only works if somebody will help you with your burden. So there's a lot of people who want to walk in such grace and power. They'll be like, Papa Lord, just lay hands on me so I can prophesy. Even if I wanted to and I laid hands, it won't work. Unless you're going to partake of the vision, God will not allow it to. That's just the truth. Joshua continued Moses' vision. The sons of Eli did not continue his vision. God took what was in Eli, put it in Samuel, and they all died. God doesn't play games. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh-huh. You got one? Okay. Um, someone asked, Papa, how do you see in the spirit and see in the physical simultaneously and prophesy without pausing to look at whatever you are seeing in the spirit? Or is it that you are hearing while speaking? Oh, that's a good question. Ask it again. I like that question. <laughs> it's deep. <laughs> uh, it says, Papa, how do you see in the spirit and see in the physical simultaneously? Okay, so it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of questions in one. But let me try and do them one by one. How do I see in the spirit? The same way I see you. The same way I'm looking at you now. It looks the same to me. I don't know if it's because I've walked in it for so long, but it's the same to me. Now, one of the things that happens is, all right, the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword, able to divide between spirit and soul. Right. One of the things that happens when you are acquainted with the word of God, you are acquainted with God himself, there becomes a clear distinction between your spirit and your soul and your body. Because right now you're in three different places you just don't know. You are just aware of your body. You are not aware of your spirit. 
you're not aware of your soul. When the Lord Jesus saw the woman that was coming, uh, when he saw a bunch of people seeking him, the Bible says, and Jesus was moved by compassion, for he saw them as sheep scattered abroad without a shepherd. Notice he didn't see in the spirit, it was his soul. He interpreted the moving of his soul. To be moved in this way. He interpreted that. So the Lord Jesus was aware of his soul. He was aware of his spirit. And he was aware of his body. Let me make it more dramatic. (laughs) This is going to mess with some people. <laughs> this this one is deep. Second Kings verse five, verse twenty-six. Can you read it in NIV? Let me read it in the easiest version. Second Kings chapter five yes, sir. verse twenty-six. Verse twenty-six. Actually start from verse twenty-four. <laughs> from verse twenty-four, you said NIV? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Sir. And it reads, when Gehazi came to the hill, he took the things from the servants and put them away in the house. He sent the men away and they left. Mm-hmm. And we had went in and stood before his master. Elisha asked him, where have you been, Gehazi? Your servant didn't go anywhere, Gehazi answered. But Elisha said to him, was not my spirit with you when the man you got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money? Wait, 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 wait. His servant left him at home. But the whole time the guy is doing mischievous stuff. He didn't know Elisha was just there watching. His body is in one place. His spirit is in another place, watching his servant. Saying, did my spirit not go with you? When you are standing by the chariots, he's giving him details to show him that I was actually there. What? When the man descended from the chariot and he gave you bribe, is this the time to collect bribe? And then after that, he curses him. Leprosy, you'll be white like leprosy and your children's children's children. Elisha was mean. Very, very mean. <laughs> but, but here's the point. I can do that by God's grace. That's why sometimes when I give prophecies, it's not by vision. It's actually I went to a place. And I'll be like, I, I, I went to this place and I saw this. I was at the hospital on the second floor. Uh, and your brother was there and I saw them doing that. Yes, that is so true. Yes, that, that is so true. That, 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 that's the room that he's in. And this is the problem because the doctor was, I saw the diagnosis that was there. Uh, oh, that is so true. They will say it's astral projection. But it's in your Bible. So what I'm trying to explain to you is that there are levels, dimensions in this thing. It's not all the same. If our, our father Elisha was here today, uh, they would have made a whole billboard of him. They would be making videos of him every day. Super warlock, he's astral projecting. <laughs> Me, I rubbed somebody's forehead and I looked at my hand. They say, it's palm reading. Uh, my own palm. <laughs> Christians, hey, oh Lord Jesus, have mercy. So what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is this, dear one. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this, is that I am able to distinguish between my soul, my spirit, and my body. So my spirit can be interacting with the Holy Spirit, can be interacting with the angel of the Lord, can be interacting with the Lord. The angel of the Lord can take me somewhere to see something and bring me back. But you are only aware of one part of you. 
I am aware of all of me. So if God speaks to me, I can hear him. When God wants me to do something, I can perceive him. I can pull my soul and I will know what I need to look at. But you, are, you have not matured enough in God's word for you to bring a distinction between your soul, your body, and your spirit. That is the issue. Did I answer it? Yes. Yeah, that's the issue. The issue is not, is not that you can't experience the same things. It's just you don't know how to separate it. Mm-hmm. Buffalo. Let's go. Got a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody said, uh, Jeremiah didn't encounter the Lord until later in life. And the Lord said, I ordained you before the foundations of the world, mm-hmm. but it wasn't revealed to him until later. Mm-hmm. So can you be in an office and not know? A hundred percent. But the point is this. God will tell you. Right. The po- it doesn't matter if you're 80 years old. The point is God will come. Until he comes, don't call yourself what he didn't call you. Mm. That's the moral of it. Deep. That's, that's the moral of the story. Yes. Another person's asking, what does it mean when you impart your prophetic spirit on someone and um, are they considered a prophet then or are they just operating from the realm of the prophetic? No, you can impart anyone. You can impart an evangelist, a regular Christian. You can impart anyone. That's, that doesn't make anything more special or less special. It doesn't. It, it's just, the point is, impartation doesn't change your ministration. It, not ministration, it doesn't change you. It just enhances you to do more for God. So I, I, I have people that are in business that I prayed for. You know? I remember um, um, T, T and Pip. Uh, T is one of my sons. He came and I prayed for him. Ah, the guy would dream what stock would go up, which one to buy, which one to sell, and he would win every day until now. Notice him is a business guy, an entertainment guy, so his insight just became crazy in that place. Mm-hmm. Um, someone asked, can a Muslim cast out demons or prophesy? No. Uh, yeah. No. But let me explain it like this. Let me tell you why I said no. Let me go into greater detail. Let me, let me help you understand. If you look at all the kings in scripture, especially the kings that were not of Israel, they always had astrologers, wise men, wizards, and, and, and such people because these diviners had the ability to give insight on events that are to come. But that is not prophecy. Because you have to understand that, okay, uh, their realms and their dimensions and their levels and their, you see, there's a first dimension, second dimension, third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension, seventh dimensions. Like an example, we exist in what dimension? The third dimension. That's why 3D movies are so impressive to us because we can feel like we're in there. But it's just, it changes, the glasses change how we see things. All right. But the fourth dimension is where fallen spirits are. You can't see them unless you can function in your inner man. Then you can start noticing demonic things. The fifth dimension is also different, but a being that is in the fourth dimension and you being in the third dimension, they can stand right there and you won't see them. Do you get what I'm saying? But somebody who is acquainted with their spirit Because every human being has a spirit. That's what makes you human. You have a spirit, soul, and body. There are people, and and you know, I always see people saying that, oh, you know, um, not everyone that is spiritually sensitive is demonic. 
That's just not true. Just an example is there are some people who are born more athletic than others. They didn't choose to be super athletic. That's just how they were born. <laughs> That's how God wanted them to be. Some people just are super athletic. My older brother, I always talk about my older brother, Richie. He's the most ripped individual I know. Since we were kids, the guy does the most, at any sport he would have played, he would be great in it. My guy didn't have a six pack, eight pack. Since we were kids, it's just like, why are you like this? You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? But that was just, that's just how he was born. So there are people who are born more sensitive than others. Okay, now, if, if their sensitivity of their, of their spiritual realm is misdirected, then they can get into things that are bad. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, in short, a Muslim may predict stuff and it may happen. That's not prophecy because this information can be in the fourth dimension. Prophecy is God's speech, God's mind. When God speaks, it doesn't even look like it's going to happen. But it doesn't matter because what he says will happen. Do you get what I'm saying? So it is not in the realm or the scope of understanding. It's always beyond. And his word cannot be vetoed. Like there was a witch who also predicted there would be a respiratory disease. It went viral when COVID started. And, and the woman said there will be a respiratory disease that will come and then it will go away and then it will come back again. She was right about that. That doesn't mean she prophesied it. She just picked it up spiritually because these are events that are already there. They're already in the fourth time. They're already here. These have been plans that people have been working on for years. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. So can you be a born prophet, born into like the wrong religion to say and then God... A hundred percent, a.k.a. Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses grew up as an occultist. People forget that. Moses was not born in a Hebrew home. He was raised by Egyptians. He served their gods. When he took the stuff, turned it into a snake. What did Ramses say? Moses, you know how magicians can do the same thing. Do you know what level of... Of, of occultic powers these guys were working with that they can turn snakes, uh, sticks into snakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it was like a regular thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know that Abraham was not always a believer? Abraham, Abraham was also an idol worshiper. Wow. God appeared to him in the midst of what he was doing and told him, get out of your father's house, come out of your people and go into a land I will show you. Mm -hmm. That's how Abraham met God. He met God in the midst of serving his gods. Yeah, this is theology. This is basic information. You can go and look it up. Yeah, you can. We are in a fallen world, people. We are in a fallen world. That's why you never criticize somebody's beginning because you never know who God has chosen. Yeah. How is it that someone can hear the voice of a demon and completely believe that it's God? Because you are soulish. And demons have the ability to come. They know what you like to hear. They love that. You see, they are, they are very intelligent beings. They are not foolish. Their foolishness is in their fallen nature. They do foolish things. Okay? But in terms of wisdom, they are not foolish. So demons know human beings like to be puffed up. Human beings love to be asserted. They like to feel special. So they will use those things. I gave an example. And I said... Okay, when was the last time the devil lied? The moment he opened his mouth. So every time a demon opens his mouth, he's lying. You have to really have a perfect discernment. I'm sorry, that, that's squeaky, huh? Okay, there we go. You, you, you have to have perfect discernment when you question demons, and this is one of the biggest mistakes, and, and, and listen, I am qualified to say this. I'm qualified to say it because I can do it and more than most people. So I believe by the grace of God, I'm qualified to say it. 
the biggest error that people who are getting into deliverance or people who are doing deliverance is they start making doctrines based on who they delivered. That's a mistake. And demons knowing that you want to be special, they will tell you things so that you can be in bondage. You never go off what a demon said. How can you? How does that even make sense? Think about it. Honestly, think about it. Try to, to put yourself together and think about it. How does that make any kind of sense? And, and, and notice, many of the people who also operate in, discernment, in, 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 in deliverance, many of those who operate in deliverance, they are truly called by God. I have never, anyone who can cast out a devil, anyone who will call on the name of Jesus, anyone who will preach Jesus to be Lord, I can't argue, God called you. I can't say that you are fake. Even if your, your theology and your doctrine is broken, that's normal, we all mature and grow. Right now, what you believed five years ago and what you believe now is completely different. You matured. Yes. Yes. You, you get what I'm saying? You matured. So it doesn't mean that when you are getting it wrong, God was not with you. God understands that we need to grow. So the mistake that a lot of people who are doing deliverance is because also, they, I don't know where this desire to make people wrong, others right, comes from instead of focusing on your assignment. So, the, you know, I've, I don't know who sent me this uh, video. It's, it's super foolish. It was actually, I laughed so hard. Ah, you know, I, I was watching uh, 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 Prophet Lovi and, 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 and mentioned maybe my father or whatever. I can't remember. The video was very short. I don't remember who sent it to me. And, and uh, uh, you know, and I just felt so pulled. If somebody's talking about Jesus, shouldn't you be pulled? I, I just knew, I just felt something was wrong. <laughs> and then, and then uh, the foolishness of the man of God is a spirit that came from love Elias. <coughs> the demon just played you. It's foolishness. It doesn't offend me. It's actually silly to me. It's actually extremely silly to me. It's extremely silly to me. But, you see, these things happen when you don't understand spiritual things. They happen when you don't understand spiritual things. <laughs> it's comedy to me. I laughed so hard. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. Do you know there are people that I've prayed for that I know who did that, that to them? For the sake of their family. I won't even say it on camera. Mm -hmm. After I will say, I need to talk to you. Yeah. And I will tell them, you see that uncle? This one did this. Wow. That one did that. Wow. Watch out for these people. De separate yourself. Amen. If you go there, you'll get yourself in the same mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you bring down the comments? I want to see something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep going, keep going. Uh, you, you could go a little bit fast. I just want to okay, right there, stop right there. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's, that's good. You know, these guys go as fast to say, oh, yeah, he killed his brother for power. It's just like, you guys are foolish. But you see, the reason why they speak carelessly is because, you see, if you want to hear from God, this is a, this is a tip for you those who desire to be close to God. If you want to hear from God, don't have your own opinion. Mm. Put it on the side. If you have already decided what you want to hear from God, how will God speak to you? Yeah. Their heart is deceitful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. If you want to ask something from God, to know something, put everything you feel on the side and ask in order to know, not ask to prove you. God doesn't speak to people who have concluded what they think they know. Yes, that's good. It doesn't work like that. That's why, to, that's why it's very important in order for you to minister, especially to be a prophet, it's so 
it is so important to walk in such purity whereby your heart is not really, um, you don't take things personal, you, you, you don't get offended by people. Because if you are somebody that is like that, you prophesy. You prophesy because of pain, you prophesy because of anger. It should never be like that. Because the moment you have set an intention in you, God can't talk to you. You have to empty yourself. You have to completely empty yourself. <laughs> Spirit that came through love Elias. Come out. <laughs> <laughs> You think, you know, even the concept, even the concept of distributing demons, it's not even in the Bible, you know that. It's, a, it's doctrines they got from wizards and witches. It's not even biblical. It's not even biblical. At all. Not at all. Can people be bewitched? Yes. Can people be manipulated? Yes. You, you don't just make it rain demons like this. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> You, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it makes zero sense. <laughs> yes, sir. It's childish. It's so childish. It's, a, it's actually incredible. <laughs> Not make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, let's get another question. I hope I answered that. Did I answer it? Yeah. Yeah. I did, right? I, sure. I think I, I got carried away there for a second. It's just so laughable to me. Uh -huh. uh, somebody's asking, how can you know the difference in dreams when it's a message or just your thoughts? I've dreamed of Apostle Innocent lately, but I'm thinking it's because I've been following you all lately. I've, I've, I dreamt Apostle Innocent, what? Yeah, and they're believing that they've dreamt of him because they've been following us lately. Okay, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. How do you know that a dream is from God? Number one, when God speaks, he doesn't speak one time. If you read in the book of Job, God speaks once, twice. When man perceiveth it not, then God will use a dream to instruct you. But if you don't also get the dream, God will send the dream a few times. Now, when we are so much in the flesh, it's very difficult for us to remember dreams or decipher dreams. Another thing also to note, if it is a dream from God and God is really serious, it will shake you up. Yeah. It will be impossible to shake it off. Okay. Now, God also, you have to remember, when you're listening to a person, the Lord Jesus said that the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So every time you listen to a person, you are connecting more to their spirit. Because if they are genuinely speaking of God, what they are speaking is coming out from what they already carry. So it also carries the grace to impact you the way the same words have impacted them. So God will start to find a way to show you that what you have been listening to is actually joining itself to you. Is, is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Then what happens is you start dreaming like, oh, um, Apostle so prayed for me and anointed me, or, or prophet, I saw you with me. And like today, I went to, um, to Air One by my house. And when I went to the store, uh, I, was work, I was with Eva. We, was I with you? Yeah, we were. Yeah, I was getting, we just came from the gym. No, from the massage place. <laughs> best, today, I had the best massage I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Uh, this, this, this was amazing. But anyhow, I'm in there gathering some things and I was speaking to, uh, to my younger brother, Prophet EJ. And uh, this young guy stops me, says, he's working there, said, Prophet Lovi, right? Say, yeah, it's me. Said, oh my God, you, you won't believe it. Um, um, uh, 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 a prophet spoke to me in a church I was going to and he said that uh, he saw you in the driver's seat and I was sitting in a baby, like I was sitting in the back seat like a, like a baby, like a child. And I understood what the man of God said to him. I just said, okay, let me pray for you here. He was working, but I just, you know, 
snuck it in there. Lord, whatever you have for him through me, give it to him in Jesus' name. May he become all you have called him to be. And then I walk and say, wow, this, this is crazy. It happens all the time now. But what I'm trying to say is that, and that prophet actually dreamt about it. And here he is meeting me and he's like shocked. You know, and he has only been there for two days. Wow. <laughs> today, today was his second day. So God will find ways to confirm and to transfer something to you in order to build you. That's just the ways of God. Okay, let's get a few more. I, is, is this fun? Yes. 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 Okay, maybe the people online. Is it, is it fun for you guys? <laughs> yes. On, if, online, if you're enjoying this type one. Type oh. one, 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 one. Online is better. <laughs> is it possible to lose prophetic sight? Sorry? Is it possible to lose prophetic sight? If Never. so, why? If wizards and witches can see in the spirit, how can you lose it? <laughs> how can you lose, I mean, how can you lose something that is, you are created with? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. You can lose your connection with God. You can lose your relationship with God. You can lose, you can lose your, your walk with God. You can mess up your salvation to the point of rejecting it so God won't speak to you, but to say you won't see spiritually is just not true. Mm. You just won't see God. You won't see the realm of God. You won't see what's happening in heaven. You won't know. You operate in the lower spheres of the spirit where demons also are. We are seated in heavenly places, far above principalities' powers. It tells us that we are seated above these things. There are people who are operating below these things, or beyond, below these spirits. Uh huh. Um, I have a question. Yeah. From someone it says, "What does the Elijah anointing and the Deborah anointing mean exactly?" I, I don't know. I've never thought about it. <laughs> I I cannot teach about the Elijah anointing because Elijah's anointing is his own. We can talk about the spirit of Elijah. That's a different thing. Elisha never got the anointing of Elijah. He got the spirit of Elijah. He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Even Elijah was shocked. He said, what you're asking is a big deal. Mm. You don't get the anointing of somebody. You can only get the spirit of somebody. Because the anointing is what, the anointing is the mark of God on a person. Mm -hmm. to be set apart by God. That's what to be anointed means. Mm -hmm. The spirit, you, you think the anointing is the power. It's not. And the yoke will be broken because of the anointing, not by the anointing. When God anoints somebody, he empowers them. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Notice, it was the spirit of God's ability in him, but the anointing is because he was set apart. So we have this concept of teaching like the anointing of so-and-so, the anointing, it doesn't work like that. It's not scriptural. Sorry, it's not. So I don't know what the Deborah anointing is, Elijah anointing is. I just know the spirit of Elijah. I know what that is. I can speak about the spirit of a person. But to speak of um, the anointing of a person, we can speak about how God set them apart, uh, how God set them apart and, and distinguished them or the person from the group of people that they were with. We can talk about that. But to say to get that, no, you don't get anyone's anointing. You only get the spirit. So when you pray for people and you say, what I have, I give to you, are you giving them the gift of prophecy? Or are you no, I'm just sharing what God has given me. I'm sharing the blessing of God that is in me. Sometimes I share grace that God has given me, which is what I usually do most of the time. Then if the grace is in place, then it's easy to develop everything else. Apostle Paul said, ye are partakers of my grace. So you can share what the, how God has, like an example is this. I was just talking to my son earlier. And he was saying, uh, Papa, you know, I don't want to abuse my access. I said, listen, you can't abuse what is yours. Mm. This is family. Amen. Another person that is not a, a, a member of the family, <laughs> uh, they, they won't even get close. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. 
It's different. If people use super chat, you can you can answer the super chat people. Uh, we can uh, read their questions because I saw some people doing it. I don't know if you read from them. You answered some earlier. Huh? You answered some earlier. Okay, okay. Let's keep going. Let's have at least five minutes more. Okay. Uh -huh. um, one person says, "What are the importance of family names, if any?" My last. Sorry. Uh, what are the importance of family names, if there are any? And he said his last name is Louis Elias. Well, family name just identifies the bloodline, who you came from. Because if you want to know where you came from, you need a name, right? It tracks where you came from. So you can identify the deposit of God or the, you know, the, the deposit of God in a place. That's why Jesus was called son of David. It was important because what David had was also in him. That's really what it is. It's to track your ancestry and all that good stuff. I, I, always, say, I always say this is that it's important to know your spiritual heritage. Mm -hmm. yes, so you have to be able to track where you came from. We are all children of Abraham, but how do we connect? then you will know, oh, one of my uncles was a mighty prophet. Ah, so there's the prophetic in our family, so I will have some deposit of prophetic. Oh, so-and-so had the power to heal. Wow, that, that's why you find um, when Apostle Paul is speaking to his spiritual son, telling him to stir up the gift, what did he tell him? He said, I know I'm put to remembrance of the faith that was in your grandmother. And that same faith was in your mother. And I'm persuaded to believe that the same faith is also in you. Therefore, stir up the, the, the gift that was given unto you by the laying of the hands. So notice, they had faith that ran in the family. They had the spirit of faith. And Paul is identifying, he's calling him, he's telling him, guy, remember, you guys have this in your family. Yeah. Another super chat question. Mm -hmm. uh, they said, Papalo, thank, I thank God for you. Would you please say a small prayer if you ever get the chance to? Please soften my heart and that I would have more compassion for people. And how can I find my spiritual name? Would you be able to tell me, please? Oh, no, that's, uh, that's personal between you and Jesus. But I pray that God will give you, uh, I pray that God will give you a, a heart that is sensitive to him. Mm. Always remember, names connect to assignments. When your assignment comes, the name will also come. Huh? No, no dream interpretation. Um, I have one. Uh, it says, you touched on this briefly in prophetic school, but when people use psychedelics and think they've had an encounter with Jesus, are they encountering evil spirits? And is the encounter false? And did these plants develop to deceive people as a side effect of a fallen earth? Okay, it's a loaded question, but I'll answer it. Not saying that the person has evil intentions. That's not what I said. I just said it's loaded, meaning it's packed with a lot of things. I don't believe anything God created was evil. But it can be misused. That's the first thing. Things can be misused. Okay? Things can 100% be misused. If you want to know you have had an authentic encounter with the Lord Jesus, your love for him grows, your pursuit of him increases, you desire to worship him, to serve him, to chase after him. If those things didn't happen, you didn't meet Jesus. So simple, right? Okay, any, any other? Uh, no. There's a um, super chat one. She okay. says, um, if I've been told that I'm called to be a prophetess, how do I begin to walk in this office or activate the gift? Uh, I, I, I don't know if the person heard what I said earlier. Uh, please rewatch the video. It will explain something to you. Because, I pro okay, let me, let me say it this way. Can you find that for me, Musa? When he ascended, he gave gifts to men. 
Mm -hmm. And it will be found in 11. Okay, let's, let's go for it. And it reads, Now he that ascended, what is it that he also descended first into the lower parts of earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended above, up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Mm -hmm. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists. Notice, he gave gifts. The gifts were humans. Mm. There's a difference between the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gifts that the Lord Jesus gave. When the Holy Spirit came, he gave gifts. The Bible says, and the Spirit gives gifts as he wills. But the ones that Jesus gave, he gave human beings that are gifts. Mm. Some prophets, some apostles, some evangelists, some teachers. For the perfection of the church. Mm -hmm. To perfect his people. To perfect his people. I'm going to do a stream tomorrow. Tomorrow is prayer? Yes. yes. Oh. <laughs> huh? Should we do streaming first and then do the prayer? Ah, that would be a lot because there will be two different topics because the prayer is to pray for people. I want to teach a powerful teaching. Is the Bible enough? Ooh. Friday. Friday. Friday? Friday. Okay, make a flyer for it so I remember. <laughs> Why, you are so dramatic. Why are you standing <laughs> <laughs> It's a powerful teaching. Don't assume what I'm going to say. Wait and watch. Huh? What's the title? Is the Bible mm. enough? Cool. <laughs> wow, the spirit of the league. <laughs> uh, that one I may just be, leave it up. <laughs> mm? Yeah, more than a refill. <laughs> uh, check it out. Make sure you observe. I was about to drink it, and he told me, don't drink, look inside. Oh. <laughs> it just happened. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, is there anything else? Yes, sir. Okay, let's, let's get, like, within five minutes, let's finish. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you di uh, explain the difference between word of knowledge and prophecy? And can you give an example? Okay, this is prophetic school question. Word of knowledge is a revelatory gift because the gift of prophecy is a revelatory gift. Mm -hmm. So word of knowledge is one of the things that are within that revelatory gift. People say prophecy is just about saying what is to come. That's not entirely true. So it's partly true. But we'll cover that at a later time. It's a much more profound subject. It will be nouveau for this moment. My grandfather is deep. <laughs> okay, any, any, any other one? Mm -hmm. Can uh -huh. God speak through colors and numbers? And if so, why? A hundred percent. God spoke through mud. The potter was making clay. And God, there was a message from God there. God can speak through anything. Mm -hmm. They're asking if the, what's called angel numbers are real. I, I don't know. I've never taught on, the, on angel numbers. Do I think God can try to get your attention through numbers, through signs, through things like absolutely? But I don't know what angel numbers is. I just know God tries to get our attention in many ways. How can you ensure that a prophetic word comes to pass? Fast, pray, walk with God, do everything you can. So do all those things. Because some prophetic um, directions are, 
are conditional and some are not. So you need to know. When God told um, Abraham, I will make you a father of many, he asked God, what should I do to ensure? Then God told him what to give. So if he didn't ask, he would have gone waiting for something that would have never happened. So you always have to be asking questions. It's necessary. Yeah. Is that it? Huh? We have in-house questions. In-house? Yeah. Okay, let's do in-house. Thank you. Um, Papa, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if we're doing like angelic questions. Is that kind of fall under the same umbrella? Just ask. Okay. I'll tell you. (laughs) So around last year, I had like an encounter with an angel and like it came in like a portal type situation and I'm not sure why it came, but it didn't talk to me. It was more like the presence came. It was looking at me. I was looking at it. Rule number one, never call an angel it. It? Oh, my bad. Uh, never do that. It's it's uh, it's not right. So so it depends. Was it in a dream? Was it open vision, closed vision, vision I of the mind? I was asleep, but okay, I so it could was trance. It. Okay. You are in a trance. You just didn't understand. You see, when God comes to you, and this is what I'm gonna teach in the next prophetic school. When God was calling Samuel. Okay, when God was calling Samuel, Samuel did not know how to engage God. There is a response that Eli taught him to give in order for God to talk. So if if Samuel just prayed, God would have never spoken. God would have still stuck being on the same thing. Samuel, the next day Samuel, because Samuel didn't know how to interact with him. Is that making sense? So he had to be taught how to engage with him. Yes. So your issue was that you were in a trance, but you didn't know how to engage. Yeah. Um, my question is, I was reading the book of Esther, and I think you touched on it a little bit before. Can, can you go louder? Sorry. Um, in the book of Esther, there's a part where um, it says, and she obtained grace and favor. Can you talk about, because in my mind, I always thought grace was unmerited favor, but it said grace and favor. It's a deep one. We'll talk about it. It really is. Because when she was, her her uncle was praying for her. Because the fate of the nation was with them. With her. Or else everyone dies. Right? You're talking about Esther, right? Mm Mm-hmm. It was a, it was a divine encounter. There are people who walk on earth that don't have the grace of God or the favor of God. So they just don't make it. They're just regular. And she was too until those two things came. And everything changes. Her uncle perceived it by the Spirit said, you may not know why God placed you there. God may have set you for a time like this. Then when she applied herself, then she obtained You can never obtain favor and grace unless you are where God has called you to be. Huh? Okay, another in-house one. Okay. It's Oh my gosh, it's you. <laughs> right in the heart, am I bleeding? <laughs> okay, so it's, it's not a dream question, but it's kind of dream related. You, for trances, you are still just in a vision as it's well a, it's, as... It's a form, it's a form of vision. And like your dreams. But like where you said that the angel came and took you, you went to a place and you said it was filled with snakes. You said it's a real place. Was that dream vision you went somewhere? No, it was, it was an out of body experience. It was a real place. So those, so you can actually physically go somewhere. Yes. Out of the body. Yes. And it still be like 
I don't know how to say it, because you mentioned it where you said you were having an encounter, and you said you pinched yourself to see if you could... Well, yes, because I wanted to, because uh, sometimes I can't tell the difference. But if you pinched yourself and you couldn't feel it? No, because I know how the body feels like. You see, you're talking about something you haven't experienced. There's a sensation your physical body has, mm -hmm. that your spiritual body has a different sensation. Yes. Yeah, so I can differentiate. That's why Paul said, I once knew a man who was caught up even to the third heaven, whether in the flesh or the body, I do not know. He couldn't, he couldn't tell the difference. It's hard. Ah, it's very, very hard because you are just like you. But then you realize that your comprehension, there are certain things that become, like every time I've had a heavenly encounter, listen, my IQ, Einstein will be a baby. Listen, your, your understanding, your level of understanding, your level of comprehension is just on a completely, I don't even know how to say it. The moment you come back, uh, that thing is turned down to like 0 0.0%. <laughs> it's like you, you, you have, not, like it's not the same. That's why I said I had words that are not even right to be uttered. You, you can't utter them here. You, you, there's no vocabulary for it. But there, there is. Okay, another audience one. Okay, don't read me a dream interpretation. Yes. Okay. I just have, uh, maybe it's a dumb question, but... Um, There's never a dumb question. I just want As loud as you can. Sorry, I just wanted to um, ask about engaging with God. Um, I know you speak a lot about meditation. I know you've talked about um, like your, what you eat, drinking water, mm -hmm. setting alarms. Mm -hmm. um, all no, those, you're good. I'm those listening. Things. So I was just wanting to know how, as far as engagement with God and desiring the gift of the prophetic, how can... The, the, the main thing is this. All those things are to make you less flesh. Too much eating makes your soul and your body feel a certain way. So if you live fasted, then your soul will be different. Your body will be different. Waking up to pray or waking up to remember your dream, all these are elements to train your body to walk a certain way. Do you understand what I'm saying? But to function in any gift from God begins by genuinely, purely, with zeal and strength to just love Jesus with everything. Because God doesn't tell secrets to people he doesn't love. Yeah. He, he has to be able to confide in you. So if he, God cannot confide in you, that, you know, God, does, God is not a gossiper. He will tell you something so that you can pray about it, do something about it. So if God comes and tells you something, but you're going to talk about him to this person, or did you know what God, ah, it's just like, becomes dangerous. Uh-huh. Um, so mm. when, when, you, when she had mentioned about, like, the angelic and how you, she said she was in a trance, but she didn't, you, you mentioned that she didn't interact, she didn't know how to interact, like, so mm. with trances or open visions or closed visions, is there a particular way of that's a long That's, that's a long subject. Uh, but there is, depending on what God is saying, there's a way to engage. It's not, but all this begins with your love, your love for God. You have to love God. You have to love, love, love God. And don't love him because of the gift. God just does those things when you're close to him. You don't tell secrets to people who are not close to you. That's the, it's just the same thing. God is not a genie in a bottle. If I do this, he will do that. It all begins in a place of relationship. That it? That's it, tall man. You you got no questions? Are you good? Oh, that, that, oh wow. All right. Anyone else? No question. Wow. 
Huh? How do you know that you're... You might want to put that mic closer. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> How do you know um, if you're encountering Jesus himself and when it's angels? So, like, not, not oh, a... Oh, there's a huge difference. When you meet the king... Like, even a touch? <laughs> Let me tell you, yeah... <laughs> <laughs> This is an honest prayer from the bottom of my heart. Seeing the Lord Jesus is, you can't put it in words. You, you can't like, every description, I don't like talking about this a lot because I get emotional. Because you relieve it, you know. It, it, it makes me it makes me want to cry, you know what I mean? Um, it's, a, it's a wonder in itself. There's no mistaking him, you can't confuse him. Listen, you stand in the presence of an angel. Angels are... You know... Uh, they carry the presence of God. But meeting God himself, meeting the Lord Jesus is different, man. Every fiber of your being, every inch of you, everything inside of you will know you're standing before God. He won't need to tell you who he is, you will know. I pray that, listen, I pray. That's a good prayer to pray. Lord, give me the grace to see you. Help me to see you. Help me to encounter. That's a beautiful, that's an outstanding prayer. Listen, seeing the Lord Jesus, ah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> it's, a, it's different. It doesn't matter how he comes. If he comes like a, like a human, or if he comes in the glory of his light, it doesn't even make a difference. What always is shocking to me, he is, the level of power you can perceive is beyond comprehension. You know, like, you, you, when you see him, you understand he holds the, everything within his grasp. You understand that you, it's just something that comes, you just know he can do this and everything goes. Like he sustains the universe as we know it, visible, invisible. When you see him, you understand this. But there's one thing about the Lord. He is so gentle. He is so kind. He is so loving, and above all, he is extremely calm. He's so calm. You know, I was talking to um, to a prophet, a prophet friend of mine, and his uh, spiritual father is a man that I really love and I respect so much. And uh, his name is uh, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa one of the very known prophets in, in Southern Africa. Powerful, powerful man of God. Um, a man of honor, of dignity. And his father told him, the level of calmness that Lovi has mastery over, you can't have that unless you have seen him. Because if you know that man too is very, very calm, extremely. There's a, there's a chill level you get to, you realize like, man, he, our life is like a vapor. Ah, seeing the, the Lord is so calm. So calm. When I saw the Lord Jesus, his eyes looked like, when I saw him like a man, he had the brownest eyes you have ever seen. The eyes looked like a deer. Looks like a deer's eyes. It was so brown. They were so beautiful. You know that image of a puppy that... Mm, <laughs> <laughs> it just, it, it puts you, like, think about that times trillions of trillions. It just has this, it, it pulls you, but at the same time, the eyes are like fierce. 
but they are so full of love at the same time. The, the funny thing was, uh, the funny thing is that when he engaged me the first time, he engaged me spirit to spirit. So I was surprised I could hear him, but his mouth is not moving. He was just smiling at me. Wow. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Yo, you know, I will talk about this another time. But it was so <laughs> funny because I had to learn to engage in that way. You know, because he was, he was teaching me something that we'll talk about it another time. But he just spoke from his spirit. Just it, He spoke to my spirit directly. And his face was just smiling. But even angels do that. But one thing that I realized that was completely different with him, he had the power to answer your thoughts. So you can be thinking about something and he'll give you complete answers on what you're thinking of and tell you, no, this is how this is. It's, it's just, but it's so simple, so calm, so calm. The calmness is what w will shock you. Sometimes you see him and his face is just full of light, but the light is not like, ah, I can't see. It's so glorious that you can't look at it, but if you look at it, it doesn't harm you. So gentle. If he holds you, you've, you know, one of the, um, I know I'm going on and on, but let me say this. When, when, you, when you see him, you feel like a baby in your mom's hands, but the care and the love and the capacity he can take care of you, no mother on earth can, I don't care how great of a mother, they can't do that. It's, it's indescribable. Everything I'm saying is like, thinking Jesus is different. Oh, you have a question? Oh, go for it, go for it. Um, if one of your sons or daughters are like out in public mm. and we, we know that God is speaking to us with somebody, mm. with some random person that we're interacting with, mm. what, should we, what should we do? Oh, if God is telling you something, you tell them. You just now have to learn the wisdom to communicate it. Okay. You get what I'm saying? It's under, don't, don't remember, you're not in church, so you can't say, can I prophesy? You can't do that. <laughs> it becomes weird. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? You, you can't be weird. Don't be weird. You know what I mean? Uh, let's not be weird. I think that's my favorite line. Yeah, let's, let's not be weird. Understand who you're engaging with. Yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Papa. Mm -hmm. You mentioned like there's other dimensions, like four through seven. Are those Even more. Mm -hmm. And are, are those prophetic dimensions and how can we grow and what they is are not, it required it's not to... It's not prophetic dimensions, it's just spiritual dimensions. What is required for us to operate in those? Mature. Love God. Worship God. Walk closely with God. Hunger for deep mysteries. The Bible says it this way. Come close to me and I will show you things you do not know of. Okay. The Bible doesn't tell you those things. It just tells you what he's saying. I will show you things you don't know. But those things that we don't know, he's not put them in there. It's just like when you read the Bible, it doesn't tell you how to prophesy. It tells you heal the sick, lay hands on them. Then what? You, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Some things are only revealed when you get close to him. Like when I blow on people, it's because God taught me how to do that. I didn't just start blowing on people. When people see me casting out demons and I'll just do, hey, and people are like, oh, 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 look at him, he's roaring like a demon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so funny to me but those things are not things that uh, they are things I have seen walking with God being taken into encounters that I was told to implement and I will see God and that's what I do remember the wisdom of God is foolishness to carnal people so somebody who says in the mighty name of Jesus be free wants somebody else to also come and say in the mighty name if we do hey can it's just, oh, that's not. Yeah. 
What does blowing on people mean? It's an expression of the Holy Spirit. When the Lord spoke to Ezekiel, he told, me, he told him what? What did he tell him? He says, um, I will put my breath in your bones. We know bones don't breathe. What do they need breath? Do, do you understand? Yeah. It's, it's prophetic. All right, let's hear you. How do you, how do you um, become, I guess, okay with seeing things that like, or hearing things that aren't, like that are kind of heavy? Like even though it's not your burden and God is showing it to you for a reason, how do you like kind of stabilize yourself when you see you pray. those things? Whenever God reveals something or shows you something, it's for you to pray. Especially if it concerns other people, it's just to pray. We, we got to pray. That's what it is. Well, I love you all. It's been a phenomenal night. God bless you, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow for prayer. Shalom. <laughs>